Fresh 102.7. Hey, it's Trey and Gia with Amber Rose. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you today? Wonderful. How are you? I'm fantastic. Gia's We're great. Wonderful. Yeah, because you're here. Excited. Aww. Uh, you guys now, are so sweet. Now, we know that you have a new talk show coming out on VH1, and we want to talk about that, but there's. Just like an elephant in the room. There are these rumors around again about this feud with Kim Kardashian. You've already denied it. <laughs> like, why does this keep coming up? Uh, I think there's just a fascination with us beefing. I don't know. People want you guys to fight. It's like entertaining, I guess. Listen, I'm all for women empowerment. I'm all for women's rights. Me and Kim spoke. We like dropped all. But literally, we never actually had beef. The internet just made it beef because I dated Kanye seven years ago. I can't even it was tell you so the name. So long ago, like I can't even tell you the name of somebody I dated. Over it for so long. <laughs> yeah, seven years ago. I don't even remember my girlfriend's name at the time. Yeah, it's just like, it, can we use this as an opportunity now to clear it up? Like you and Kim are cool. Everyone is okay. Man, listen. It's all positivity, bro. You listen, it. world. It's positivity. Yeah. Nothing's first. going on. No. All right, man. so we got Stop that out of the way. with the corny, fake-ass beef. <laughs> yeah. It's corny. Uh, speaking of women empowerment, uh, Gia was talking about this this morning. She loves the concept of the slut walk. Cool. This like, is amazing. I, and you. You're moving into your second year now. Yeah. Can we like go into more about this? Like, I heard For you're sure. going to be expanding starting in October. It's going to be a bigger event than it was this past year. Yeah, I mean, you know, always the first time around, you kind of work out the kinks and you figure it out along the way. And, um, you know, last year was really cool. I mean, we have four thousand women show up, That's and that and that press was literally just on my social media. Like, I just promoted it on social media, and that was it. Um, and it came out, and it was just, it was amazing. You know, especially when I'm in LA. Uh, women come to me all the time. They're like, I'm closer with my mom now because of Slut Walk. And, you know, I'm closer with my husband. I brought him to Slut Walk and he understands me a lot more. So um, it's just really cool. And for people that don't know, could you maybe go in a little bit more into what the Slut Walk is? Sure. Um, well, I'll give you a little background. In 2011, there was a woman that was sexually assaulted on a college campus in Toronto. And, um, she went to the authorities and then the police officers came to the school and said, you know, you girls can't be dressing like sluts and expect a guy to not want to touch you. And the girl was just like, yo, what the f Like, I could wear whatever I want. I'm, that's not an invitation for you to come and touch me. That's not consent. If I don't say yes, please come and touch me, then don't f***ing put your hands on me. So these two feminists just band together and um, and started a slut walk. So there's been slut walks all over the world. This is not, I didn't create the slut walk at all. I just decided to have my own and use my name and my platform to have my own Amber Rose slut walk. Is this kind of the direction your show on VH1 is gonna be? The Amber Rose show? I mean, it's my show and so I'm passionate about that. So that'll definitely be an element to it. Um, but yeah, it's not just a show for women. It's not a feminist show. Um, although there are male feminists out there, I like my audience to be 50-50 because it's important for me um, to teach men and women as well because a lot of women call each other hoes and bitches and sluts all day. Oh, it's so they easy to say it. that. It's yeah. such a fallback. Like you don't like someone. Oh, she's a slut. She's a yeah. bitch. She's yep. a whore. Or just the fact that you're insecure with another woman's sexuality and you feel, you know, uh, less confident around her. You automatically have to put her down to make you feel better, um, which is both. So. <laughs> Tell us about your show. Like, what what are we going to expect? Like, what are some of the things you're going to do on it? Um, well, my show is unapologetic. It's a no judgment zone. We encourage the audience to chime in. Um, I have a really cool friend. Uh, his name is Dr. Chris Donahue. He's a sex therapist. So uh, he comes on with me and we, we answer questions. We have people call in. We have uh, the audience. Ask, and I mean, these questions are like, like really, really in-depth sex and relationship questions, yeah. you know? Um, and like I said, it's a no judgment zone. So it's never like, ooh, you're into that. It's just like, oh, that's interesting. I've never thought of that. Wow, how can, I, you know, we help you. Um, I give my personal opinion based on uh, what I've lived and what I've done in life. He gives the more education uh, aspect of it. And 
Um, and then we have a whole segment where I interview a celebrity, Uh-oh. Um, which is really cool because I made a lot of amazing friends over the years, and now they're looking out for me by coming on my show. It's fantastic. Yeah. Like, who do you have lined up? I can't tell you that. You, you gotta can't watch tell the show. us. No. <laughs> well, no. What we do know at least is you have an amazing team behind you. Dr. Phil and his son are producers as well yes. as you. Yeah. How did this all come about? I mean, was this your idea, or did they come to you seeing your celebrity in your platform? Um, no, I actually uh, did a segment on the doctors about slut shaming and the doctors is under Dr. Phil. Um, yeah, and I did the segment and then I went in the back and the producer, I'm like getting ready to leave and the producers are like, you're amazing. And I was like, thanks. And then they're like, you should have your own show. And I'm like, yeah, keep I blowing know. smoke up my ass, whatever. Like, what, you're lying, shut up. You're like, fine, I'll come back. Well, but, you know how yeah. Hollywood is. People yeah. always just tell you, yeah, you should have that. Oh, we can help you with this. And you're yeah. like, I'll wait to see that. And then I saw it, and then Dr. Phil was like, he was like, well, goddamn, the camera loves you, girl. You just know what you're talking about. And uh, That's a great <laughs> that Dr. Phil. Is, yeah. That's a really good Dr. Phil. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, uh, and that was over a year ago. So it's taken that long. It, yes, yeah. And Dr. Phil has helped me along the way, and I call him Doc, because um, we're cool like that. Naturally, yeah. And, um... Yeah, I'm like, Doc, you know, like, just help me. And he did. And he just gave me all little gems of, you know, how to transition into different subjects. And it's not easy to be a talk show host. It's not. I mean, that's why, you know, talk shows get canceled the first season most of the time because it's very difficult. Um, so I really just absorbed all the knowledge from his team that had been in it for 20 years. And he's been in it for 20 years and just learned for this whole year. And now it's time for me to shine. Uh, everybody's talking about the presidential election. Let's say you had Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton on your show, mm -hmm. and you were going to ask them each a question. What would it be? I would never have Donald Trump on my show. <laughs> well, that, that answers that. Yeah. All right, so Hillary Clinton's on the show. Yeah. What are you going to ask her? I'm going to ask her if she forgave Monica Lewinsky. Really? Yeah. I would watch that. Mm -hmm. I want to know those answers. Yeah. That's like a whole hour right there, just yeah, that question. Sure. That's a two-part episode. Yeah. yeah, I would give that to her. She would have it. Yeah. I mean, but that's not completely out of the realm if this does really well and you get signed on. Yeah. Have you, have you gone back or been able to look back on yourself like 10, 15 years ago? And would you imagine that this would be your life now? Um, I knew that I didn't belong in Philly. I always knew that. I wrote that in my book that... Um, you know, I used to tell my friends when I was young, I used to say, um, I'm moving to Hollywood, you guys. I don't know, like, what the you're going to do with your lives, but uh, that's where I'm going to be. And my friends would be like, Amber, you live in a one-bedroom apartment with your mom. Like, no, you're not ever going to, you're like, you're totally in denial. And then when it start happening for me, my friends always, like, every time I go back to Philly, they're like, remember you always used to say, you know, that you would live in Hollywood? And, and I did, and I f did it. <laughs> And it's so cool. Now that you're adding on this TV show, how are you going to find time? Um, I make time. You know, you mean time for my baby? Time for everything. Time including for you. Sebastian. Yeah. Well, there's no time for me. <laughs> there's no time for me right now. And I'm okay with that. I'm cool with that. Um, but yeah, I, I tell my team to try their hardest to give me two days off a week. So I have full 24 hour days with my son. Now, when I'm in L.A., sometimes I bring him to work with me, you know. He, love, he wakes up in the morning and says, Mommy, I'm going to work with you today. Like, he loves it. But, yeah, I try to at least have two days off where I have full days with him. His father does the same. And, um, yeah, I just, I'm superwoman, man. I just figure, figure it all out. And, and by, speaking of figuring it all out, congratulations, because you and Wiz really have figured it out post-divorce. Yeah. That was something beautiful to see. You went to a strip club together yeah. to acknowledge the fact that you worked this out. We signed our divorce papers five months ago. Really? Yes. So, like, we I mourned that, you know, that day. It was a very hard day for the both of us because we love each other so much. And in a perfect world, we would be together. But we're both too busy for each other. You know, we're both bosses. It just, it just can't work in a marriage. You know what I'm saying? Um, the love doesn't go away, though, ever. And it so happened that the divorce actually went through the court. It took that long to go through the court system. And that specific day that we went to the strip club is when it was actually final. 
happen. Speaking yeah. of family, Sebastian's three now. Yeah. Uh, you were saying earlier he's really smart. Yeah. Really funny. Mm -hmm. What are you going to say if he wants to do what you do? If he wants to work in the entertainment business? You're going to encourage it? You're going to say this business I'm gonna is let I'm going to let him know what it is, and I will most definitely be his manager. I will, you know, drop everything. Manager. And, yeah, 100%. Amber Rose Show on VH1. What's the premiere date and time? Um, the premiere date now is July 8th, Friday nights, every Friday night at 11 o'clock on VH1. All right, the Amber Rose Show. VH1, watch it. We're Trey and Gia. Thanks for watching.